In part one of this video, we discuss some tuning basics that you really need to be able to understand if you want to be able to determine if your stock C6 or C5 tune is performing optimally or if perhaps there's some room for adjustments to either car's tune that will increase its performance. Specifically, we discuss two ways that your engine knows how much air is coming in. The first method is by measuring it directly with the mass airflow sensor. The second method is known as speed density and it's more of an indirect calculation. We also discussed long-term fuel trims, what they are and how they affect your part throttle and sometimes your wide open throttle fueling. We touched on knock and we'll get a little deeper into that as we get into wide open throttle fueling a little bit down the road. Then we took the C6 for a ride and we came back and we analyzed the scans. Finally, we connected HP tuners to the C6 and downloaded a copy of its stock tune and that's where we left off. If you've not seen that first video or if the concepts are a little fuzzy in your mind, I highly recommend you go back and watch that one again and then come back to this video. Toys for life. Okay, since we established in part one that the C6 is running about 10% lean and it's equally lean in both bank one and bank two of the engine, the first thing I wanna do is take a peek in the tune and see what the stoichiometric air fuel ratio is set at. Here's why, pump gas that contains no ethanol has a stoichiometric ratio of 14.68 to one, but most of the pumps in my area for 91 octane state that it contains up to 10% ethanol. If that fuel actually contains 10% ethanol, then the stoichiometric ratio is actually 14.08 to one, means that it takes more fuel for the same amount of air as compared to pump gas that has zero ethanol. This might very well explain some of the reason my C6 is running around 10% lean across the board. And if the stoichiometric ratio in my C6's tune is off, that's the first change I'm gonna make. So let's take a look at the C6's stock tune and see what it's set at. To do that, we simply open up the as found C6 tune file that we downloaded in the last episode. We go into the engine tab and then look under fuel and then click on Stoich AFR. As you can see, mine's at 14.68, so it's set for 0% ethanol fuel. Go ahead and disregard all of the columns to the right of 14.68. That would be used if this was a flex fuel vehicle, which it's not. Now over the past several years or so, I have tested the 91 octane pump gas at my local gas station more times than I can count. And every time it's been between seven and 9% ethanol. So let's go ahead and test the fuel that's in the C6 right now. So you can see how easy that is to do. And more importantly, so we can see exactly what its ethanol content is. The first step is to take out your handy dandy ethanol tester that you can get from Amazon. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description below. You fill the water up to this bottom line and then you just go ahead and set it down. Next, I need to get the fuel. You can get it from the pump or I'm just gonna get it from the tap here on the fuel rail because I wanna see what the fuel pressure is anyway. And then I just bleed off the pressure into that jar. I went ahead and started it. My fuel pressure luckily is just perfect. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the button here to bleed a bunch of fuel down into my jar. Make sure you have a fire extinguisher handy. Don't burn your car and your garage down. Don't smoke, all that good stuff. Once I have enough fuel, go ahead and shut the car off and disconnect the fuel gauge carefully. Go back to the bench and fill up the ethanol tester tube all the way up to the top line. It's very clear where it needs to be. Once that's done, go ahead and shake it thoroughly. Go get yourself a drink of water and come back and see where the ethanol content line is. You can see it here. It's around E8, E9. Here's a clearer picture. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is change the Stoich in the tune. So go back into Engine, Fuel, General, Stoich AFR. And I'm gonna change this to 14.19, which is the stoichiometric ratio for E8 fuel. I'll go ahead and save this and I'm gonna write it to the car's computer. We'll hop back in, take another test drive while scanning with HP Tuner Scanner. And here are the results from that scan. And as you can see, we're down to about 5% being added. We were at a little over 10%, so that's a big improvement, but not good enough for our taste. Okay, so 5% positive long-term fuel trims are pretty close, but since we have HP tuners and we're Corvette enthusiasts, we can dial it in much better than that. As mentioned in the part one video, if we happen to be cruising down the road in the C6 and we're at part throttle with positive long-term fuel trims, 
and we hammer the throttle. It goes into wide open throttle fueling, but unfortunately the C6's computer system and its narrowband oxygen sensors have no way of knowing exactly what that wide open throttle air fuel ratio is. So it errs on the side of caution and it adds the same percentage of fuel that the long term fuel trims were adding under part throttle. It drags that in as well to wide open throttle and adds 5% more fuel. But if it happens to turn out that in reality the wide open throttle fueling is on the rich side as most GMs already are, and then we dump an extra 5% fuel on top of that, that could cost us a little bit of power. So if we go ahead and tune the long term fuel trims at part throttle so they're zero or slightly negative, and we use a wide band oxygen sensor a little bit later to tune the wide open throttle air fuel ratio, we can go ahead and optimize the wide open throttle fueling. We can pick up some extra horsepower and make it run more efficient all at the same time. And that's a beautiful thing. We will absolutely get to wide open throttle air fuel ratio tuning using a wideband oxygen sensor in a little bit. But for now, let's continue to focus on our part throttle air fuel ratio tuning using the feedback mechanism from our C6's narrowband oxygen sensors, which are known as the long-term fuel trims. Oh, and yes, you can absolutely use a wideband oxygen sensor to tune your part throttle air fuel ratios. Some people even swear that that's a better way to do it, and that's fine, but it's also acceptable to tune your part throttle air fuel ratios using long-term fuel trims so we're gonna continue down that path for the purposes of this beginning tuning video because we've been getting to know and understand and use long-term fuel trims. All right, so we know our long-term fuel trims are adding 5% more fuel pretty much across the board based upon the last scan that we did just a few minutes ago. So now let's proceed with our goal of getting those long-term fuel trims to close to zero or even slightly negative at like one or two percent negative, which means it's starting to remove a little bit of fuel from what was calculated by the computer after considering the input from the mass airflow and the speed density methods. The reason we target the zero or slightly negative long-term fuel trim is because let's get back to the example where we're driving down the road in our C6 this time we're at part throttle and we have a negative 1% long-term fuel trim. Because the computer doesn't know what the wide open throttle actual fuel ratio is that is being burnt in the motor, and because it always errs on the side of caution, it will not subtract fuel because of that negative long-term fuel trim. So now our wide open throttle tuning will be very close to what we tune it to be a little bit later here in the series using the wideband oxygen sensor. And if we do all of this correctly by tuning our long-term fuel trims at part throttle to be slightly negative and our wide open throttle fueling is right on because we used a wideband oxygen sensor, we can pick up some horsepower. So now for the million dollar question, exactly how do we get our long-term fuel trims close to zero or slightly negative? Well, as we learned in part one, the computer or PCM uses a logic driven blend of inputs from the mass airflow sensor and the speed density methods to determine how much airflow is coming into the engine. So how do we know if it's the mass airflow sensor side of the equation or the speed density side of the equation that's off or perhaps both sides are off? Simple, we effectively create a temporary custom tune so that we can turn off one side of the equation at a time which allows us to isolate the other side of the equation. Then we go back out for a test drive and a scan and reviewing that scan allows us to know how far off the isolated side of the equation is. Then we adjust the tune for the isolated side, repeat the drive and scan until we get the long-term fuel trims for the isolated side exactly where we want them. Then we can go ahead and turn off the side that we just adjusted so we isolate the other side of the equation and then repeat the process to adjust this side. Perfect. Now, unintentionally, I think I probably made that sound a lot harder than it actually is. So be sure to come back for part three, where we'll start off by shutting off the speed density side of the equation and we'll tune the mass airflow sensor side of the equation. Then of course, once adjusted, we'll shut off the mass airflow sensor side of the equation and we'll adjust the speed density side of the equation. And then we can go ahead and modify the tune one more time so that once again, the computer is using inputs from both sides to calculate the amount of airflow coming into the engine. And if we did everything correctly, our long-term fuel trim should be close to zero or hopefully pulling out like one or 2% of the fuel.